How do you become a monk? Actually, technically, I'm not a monk. I'm a Franciscan friar, and monks and friars are slightly different. But we're very similar to monks. Monks are people who, uh, they, they make a promise to stay in one place for their whole lives. They stay in a monastery and they just, they take what's called a vow of stability. And that, that's the difference between monks and friars. Because, well, we friars, we move about the country all over the place. I've, I've lived in lots of different religious houses and friaries. And um, we're called itinerant because we're always on the road. It means you're on the road. So how did I become a friar? Well, first of all, I had to find out where friars were. I didn't know anything about friars. And I said to myself, well, I, I better find out where they live. So um, in those days, Uncle Google didn't exist. So I had to use the newspaper and, um, and I found a newspaper cutting that told me uh, the address of this place, Pantasaf. So I picked up the phone and said, um, he said, can I come and visit you? I, I think I need to talk to you. So um, they said, sure. And, uh, and I came over and I started talking to one of the brothers. And um, they said, well, you know, if you're interested in becoming a friar, um, you should come and visit just a few times just to see if you think you're on the right track. So I did. And, um, and, I, and I kept coming back and um, you, go through this, you go through this process and all the time you're kind of praying and trying to check to see if this is really what God is asking you to do. Because some people, they want to do things because they want to do them. But unless God wants you to do something, you're never going to be happy doing it. So God wanted me to do this. And um, I went through this long process of visiting the other brothers and um, them asking me some pretty difficult questions. Um, having medical tests, psychological tests, physical tests, and uh, then trying it out for a year. The first year when you, when you join, you're not in straight away. It takes seven years to become a friar. The first year is called the postulancy, when you're postulating or, or thinking about um, joining the order. So um, I spent one year as a postulant and um, we served the poor, we worked with the dying, um, spent time in prayer just as a beginning. And then the year after that, uh, it's called the novitiate, when you become a novice, which just means a newbie, you know, you're a new person. And um, that's when you get your habit, that's when you put on this, 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 this garment. And um, that's a very difficult year. That year is called the year in the desert. And you don't get much contact with your mum and dad. You can't, cont can't contact your friends. And um, it's really quite an intense year of prayer. And you study so that you really draw close to God in a way you've probably never done before. After that year, you make what's called temporary vows, just promises that last just for three years. So you kind of like, you know, are you thinking of getting married? Well, if you're thinking of getting married, um, you might get engaged to someone before you do get married. And that engagement is like, you're moving towards it, but you haven't actually made the step just yet. And temporary vows are a bit like that. Take them for three years, and um, you promise the three vows. And here's what they are. Poverty, chastity, and obedience. Now poverty means that you give up all the things you own, all your possessions, all your toys, all your things that you have. I had to give up my car. Okay, you get rid of your, all your money, Everything is all got to go. You just entrust yourself completely to, to Christ. And um, he looks after you from then on in. That's poverty. Chastity means that you don't get married. You promise not to get married. No more girlfriends, or if you're a girl, no boyfriends. And um, I had to get rid of my girlfriend. Can you imagine? She wasn't very pleased. 
But anyway, for the Lord. So, um, no romantic relationships, and that's chastity. And thirdly, obedience. And obedience means that there's one brother in each of our communities who, he's in charge. He's called the guardian. And um, he tells us what to do, and we do it. We make a promise that whatever he says, we will actually do. So he says, jump, and I say, how high? And that's our three vows, our three promises. So the way we put it is, no money, no honey, and a boss. All right, poverty, chastity, and obedience. And we, and we show those vows on our cord that we wear around our middle, just like married people wear a, a wedding ring. And there they are, these three knots on our cord, poverty, chastity, and obedience. And that's the way you become a friar. You finish those three years. I took another two years of temporary vows after that. So I wanted to just extend that time. And, um, and then after that, you tie the knot. You make it permanent. And, um, and you take solemn vows, final vows, that you can't go back from. And um, that's you. That's your promise to God for life.